I can't hear it because my ears are too full of Star Trek. Nice. I definitely am not putting in the episode what you can't hear, but it's a good lead in. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Discovery. We're on. Hello. Hello. We have to do intros, man. This this is a young podcast, sub pod. It's only episode 11 of Star Trek Subspace Transmissions, a We Were Gamers production. Yes. That's a mouthful. It is a lot. <laughs> Welcome to our Star Trek sub pod. JJ, hello. How are you on hello. this fine Friday? I am well, and... These were a set of episodes right here. Yes, we have been watching Some... Star Trek Discovery. We did a few episodes each time. So we had gotten over, what, three three episodes of this show. We've gotten through six episodes because we right. did like the intro with one episode. And then we did a couple more and then a few more. And then we started this one and then things started to pick up and I couldn't stop watching yeah, I was super pulled in through uh, maybe not the beginning uh, of this block, but once we started moving into the later parts of this block, it was like, oh, okay, I'm watching the next one now. Like, Yeah, yeah. I think that we both were kind of in the same place of like episode seven, mm, whatever. Episode eight, okay, like things are interesting. We're going to have like a two-part episode here. Episode right. nine, wait, what? You yeah, know exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. things things uh, mm-hmm. got a little crazy. And then ten or eleven or are things are getting real. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know. Even I oof. real or surreal. Something. All right. Um, first of all, just to, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there that in the future on this show, I want people to know because I've gotten some questions lately. We are going to do a transporter episode. Maybe we'll do that in the middle of the break. Mm. Existentialism and transporters have been around a long time, and I've had multiple conversations in the last few weeks about them. Oh, yeah. I did. uh, I think I, in high school, did one of those, like, you know, science teacher wants you to write a paper about stuff because you have to have writing in science. Right. And I wrote a paper about transporters in high school. And And I I was reminded of that. When later on in this spat of episodes, here's the spoiler warning, by the way, episodes seven through 11, Star Trek Discovery yeah. season one. Yeah. If you haven't watched all these, we're going to spoil the heck out of them. Yeah. Uh, later on in this, the first time, not the first time, but definitely one of the first times we've seen it multiple times, the transporter is used to murder people. Yeah. Um, I mean, ethics of that is is very simple, obviously, but also the existentialism of a pattern buffer and all that sort of stuff um you should dig out your old paper if you can find it that'd be fun uh yeah i'll try i don't know that's gonna happen but it's definitely a lot of the like what is what makes you you and like when you do transporting are you cloning people really or like what is the where's the soul live you know yeah and then, um, like, you know, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle saying that you can't do what the show <laughs> thinks and says that yeah. it's doing in science. Well, hey, man, now we've got the Higgs boson particle, so maybe you can do it. No, you can't. I know. I know. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's a good... The idea is good, but no. Yeah, the idea is good. Uh, you just have to... I think that if you really sit with the transporter, you get too bogged into it's not just magic, you know? Oh, it, if you start thinking about, like, if the if they made one of these for real, how would it work? It starts to get very scary. I don't think people quickly. would ever use them. I, yeah, man. Do you want to be disassembled atomically and then hope that you are reassembled somewhere else correctly? And they, a, yeah, uh, with, we can't do, we can't start this now. We can't, we can't no, do it. We can't. We got too we much can't. to do. Um, before we get going, I, I think that this proves to me these couple episodes that they have a way too advanced medical bay. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. It, they figured out some medical stuff here in these, uh, in some of these episodes that 
uh, why weren't they doing this in the future episodes in the yeah. future Star Trek stuff? I, it, this is like TNG level stuff, which is hundreds and hundreds of years later. Right? Yeah. Not okay. Yeah. They needed to and really actually, pull back on this. Yeah, we'll even get back to part of it later where like, huh, they, <laughs> their medicine is so advanced in some ways and then not really in others? Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. There's there's some weird stuff towards the end. All right. Episode seven. Uh, the opening, still the same. They don't change it, but it's still kind of growing on me a little. I like it. Yeah. Burnham uh, goes to a party and we yep. finally... F- My first note here is, why are they listening to 90s hip hop in 22 whatever? Uh, so how many years? 22? It's 22, right? Is it? I think it is, right? And then like TNG and those other shows are like 23, 23. 24. Yeah. So 22 would be 200 years from now? Yeah. 200 years from now, are people going to be listening to 90s hip hop? Probably. I, I mean, there are some good songs from the 90s in the hip hop scene, so I'm not people mad still, about it. I'm. Just, people now yeah. listen to Beethoven, which is not 200 years, but. It's getting there, I guess. I guess yeah. it's like 170 or something, 160 probably. So it's not un- inconceivable. You know, we've learned from the uh, previous iterations of those movies that they listen to the Beastie Boys quite a bit. That was a joke that fell flat for you, I guess. I guess I don't remember what it's referencing, so I'm uh, not sure. All the J.J. All the, uh, Abrams movies use the same Beastie Boys song as their commercial. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It was like the um, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, RIP to... Um, shoot, which one of the Beastie Boys died? Ooh, I don't remember. But yes. <laughs> Is it MCA? It might be MCA. You're I probably forget. right. Anyway. It sounds right to me. Anyway. Speaking of dead, yeah. there are 10,000 dead in the war so far. We finally get a number and a casualty figure and stuff. 10,000... Not as many as I thought. It's still a small conflict. Yeah. It, I mean, I you know, people dying is bad in general. So, you know, sure. one life, you but know. You uh, you, but, uh, you lose a planet to the Klingons, and that could be millions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Stamets not doing so good. Things are weird mm. in his brain a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I... He is really just like they told him act goofy all the time <laughs> and he's like uh, i'm not sure how to interpret this and then he just kind of runs with the acting uh you know what's the the cue right he's just like yeah just, just be goofy all the time and he's like uh okay and then he does it and okay you never yeah. know which statements you're gonna get in any scene from here out <laughs> It kind of is like what I thought they were headed for early, you know, with the whole Stamets sees himself in a mirror or something. Mm-hmm. Um, we see a weird space. Well, first, there's a yellow alert. Yeah. Which, odd. We haven't seen those in a long time. Mm-hmm. We have never seen them on this show or before this show. I think they're a later show thing, but that's cool. Yeah. I mean, they've used them before as like a, ooh, caution stuff is... <laughs> Maybe could happen. Yep. They find a s- endangered space whale. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Burnham is kind of like, we have to save the thing. And you kind of can clearly see that this is going to be what it's about, right? Like, we, we have a duty to the endangered space whale to take it somewhere because it's endangered and the space laws of endangered species are very clear apparently right and uh you could tell that literally off the bat this is what the problem is going to be is that they're going to take this alien and something bad happens and we meet a f- old friend jj it is uh your good friend and mine harry mud goes on a Ooh. murderous rampage through the ship just walks around and starts shooting people and you're like wait what it- that was a main character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gone. Lorca, I love it, is only worried about Burnham. Doesn't care about anyone else. Yeah. Odd, and he's but like, still cool. 
Make sure you keep Burnham safe. Blam, Lorca's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Harry blows up the whole... I think that we are putting the E tag on this one. There's going to be a lot of this stuff in this. It's kind of later on not... You know what I mean? Yeah, it gets a little... Yeah. So Harry blows yeah. up the whole damn ship. Yep. Stamets figures out there's a time loop happening. Oh, I I wrote in my notes. Um, Rain Wilson just chews up scenery as he's playing this character every time. <laughs> yeah, he he's does. just like constantly fed up with everything that's going on. It, you don't realize it at the beginning of the episode why he's acting this way, but he's just fed up. He's like, "Ah, why do I have to do this again?" Yeah, and you're, you know, it's a well. Anyway, it comes and then uh, a little farther down in my notes, I wrote. Oh, this episode is just Deja Q, the, the Star Trek TNG episode where they're caught in a time loop. Yeah, it is. It totally, and that, I don't know if that cheapens Deja Q a little bit, but we've never seen like a handheld time loop device before, uh, which yeah. you find out is not handheld later on. Uh, you find right. out that his ship is powering it from inside the Gorm, Gorm, Gormagander. Inside the space whale. Yeah. Space whale. Yep. I think I'm just going to say Space Whale from now on, ever. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not going to even try to pronounce that thing. I didn't Do you think it. the Gormagant... Do you think the Space Whale could have saved Earth in Star Trek Four? That's a great question. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it does very well in water, so I don't know if that would have been a problem or not, because it doesn't do well in air, that's for sure. Yeah, it's kind of weird when they bring it on board the ship, and then they're just, like, leaving it on the floor of the shuttle bay. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't seem good. You'd think that they would suspend it with like a some sort of science, a vacuum instead. tank or whatever. Yeah, any any sort of science, a tractor beam or inside a thing that is, whatever. A thing that is built to live in an in a environment without gravity and when you vacuum. subject it to gravity and air is probably not going to do great. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a xenobiologist, but yeah. I guess you know. Hey, it seems like. You know, Burnham, where were you here? Come yeah. Uh, Statement somehow is outside the loop. We assume it's because of the jumps. We find out the loops are different. Mud takes Lorca. Uh, he's trying to sell the ship to, uh, we assume, the Klingons. And yeah. he And then he later confirms that, I guess, right? Yeah. Later in the I, episode. I love this line he has. So many ways to blow this ship up. It's a design flaw. <laughs> Which is pretty great. Uh, then we get a, the best montage in the show so far, which is just him killing Lorca 50 times because he's frustrated. Yeah. He's just like, Argh! he just like shows up on the bridge, shoots him, starts Time over, shows him the bridge, shoots him. Time over. Yeah. That's, I, episode seven was kind of a throwaway, I think. Um, yeah. In in that, I this is their first Star Trek episode of the series mm -hmm. this this episode felt like oh okay this is their monster of the week slash you know random episode of the week we've format gotten, that they're starting now we've gotten six episodes in everyone understands what's happening there's the background of the war and now we start yeah the monster of the week star trek which uh, and, I, and it would have stayed that way if they hadn't introduced all of the like relationship stuff that starts going on in this episode. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Um, so Stamets teaches uh, Burnham to dance because they need help. So she has to use her feminine wiles or something, yeah, and love to get Tyler to believe them that they're in a time loop because they need Tyler. Um, they kiss and. There's a time crystal, which I think is from Enterprise. And they, I didn't. OK, let's talk about the time crystal. Okay. I didn't understand what it was. And also, is it actually related to something from later? Because there I did not catch that at all. It was just like magical time thing, whatever. And then I was very confused the whole time. I'm pretty certain a time crystal appears in hmm maybe i'm they wrong talk about they talk about how they're unstable and that 
oh, you need a fourth dimensional being to maybe maybe it just reminded them. me a lot of the like the time war stuff in Enterprise. Maybe maybe this is how that stuff happens or something, but because mm. we never really find out how people are jumping around in time in Enterprise. So uh, yeah, this true. just kind of reminded of me of that a lot. I thought maybe they, they were going to tie it to that tech. So uh, maybe okay. it's only a discovery thing, but it definitely had that feeling of Enterprise. Yeah, we're there's like, a lot oh, of it, there, there's time travel now. You're like, uh, what? Yeah, there's a lot of techno junk in this one. They weaponized dark matter somehow. Oh my god, there, there was so much random garbage technology yeah. talk happening for like no reason that I could really understand. It could have all been thrown away for the time loop stuff. Just Harry Mudd has a time loop, you know? Yeah, uh, uh, I I think it was fun that his little time manipulating thing or whatever goes back to like they had thought of this guy's character back when he was in prison with Lorca and Tyler because he talked about how he was able to rob like some Betazoid bank or whatever right which was supposed to be imp- impenetrable that everyone knew of somehow and they were like well, no he's clearly lying because like no one could rob that place yeah. and he's like oh I did it and now you see now like you this see is how, how he does right. it and we start to think Mud might be losing his mind a little bit because he can't remember that he's upset about this Stella woman um, that he's been talking about quite a bit. You know, maybe he's done too many loops or whatever. Michael. Oh, I, I played that as, or I, I read that as. He was lying. He, just doesn't, rem- he doesn't remember which lie he told you. Ah, yeah. okay. I thought for a minute, and you're probably more correct there because later on we find out about Stella, but. Uh, Michael and Lorca come up with a plan along with a couple right. other people. She uses I, herself as bait to reset the time loop one last time. I, I said, uh, oh, man, this is turning into a heist movie now. <laughs> Which is pretty great, I think. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Lorca deals for the crew, which is weird. Mud's like, oh, maybe we're finally done with this. And you can tell everyone knows they have a plan. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we find out that Mud is actually running from Stella. Mm-hmm. And then we get something that I just flat out lost me. They do a whole bunch of stuff to the ship from the captain's chair because Mud hasn't taken it over because it's a non-critical system. Yeah. What? <laughs> The chair that controls the whole ship is a non-critical system somehow and is not locked out of the system. And as we see later in this set of episodes, you can do some critical stuff from the captain's chair. Sure can. Like change navigation coordinates and whatever. Sure can. Like there's a bunch of pretty critical, I would think, systems that seem to go through the captain's chair. So it's confusing that the chair itself would not be considered... Mud is removed as a problem as he has to go off and marry Stella. And uh, we also get a little sneak peek of basically everyone is going to choose to ignore that Stamets has a problem. Yeah, kind of weird, right? Yeah. I mean, let's see. His boyfriend, Culber, has to know that he's changed, right? He's a different person a little bit. Yeah. Ignoring it. Everyone's ignoring it pretty clearly. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, there's not much else to say about that. It's a standalone thing. Yeah, it was fun. I was fun. just, I don't know. I, something about Rain Wilson in this. I, nah, I, nah. okay. I don't know. But he, he's not my favorite actor anyway. Um, not because he's bad or anything, but just because I don't know why I can't, can't like him. But I think I did it was enjoy their shot why. at a cue. Yeah, exactly. Th- this was their plan, right? To get one of those. Uh, and the episode was really fun. I enjoyed it, uh, despite not enjoying Rain that much. And it was, it was Him good. Killing I, Lorca a bunch of times was worth the whole episode. There were some very, very funny parts. <laughs> All right. Sivas Pockham Parabellum, buddy. Yeah, man. John Wick 3, let's go. <laughs> if you want peace, prepare for war. You kind of get the feeling off the bat that there's something going on. They're going to deal with Cloak in this episode. Uh, oh, boy. Lorca. Oh, I, what, what? I, no- I noted right off the bat the sure. first time they don't call it a cloak. They call them invisibility screens. Ah, see, okay. And um, I started, I, I wrote it down in all caps. 
WTF is an invisibility screen. <laughs> it's their excuse for later on when they break the science of it and the time. <sighs> In this episode, they're going to try and discover a way to get through the Klingon invisibility screen. Yeah. Which we know by the end of Kirk's era is still in effect and Spock is the first one to come up with a way to target a ship that is invisible with right. cloak. Yes. So either this can't pan out or there's some sort of weird, you know, mm -hmm. we'll just talk about it now. I, I, by the end of this, I was by the end of this set of episodes, I was even more upset that they have changed the look of Klingons mm. because yeah. not only yeah. are they trying to dance around breaking cloak and it's still fitting it into the timeline or whatever, but also why, why did they have, I mean, why did yeah. they have to change the look of the tank Klingons? <laughs> why couldn't they use the old look, man? I don't it's, know. It's it's really hurts the episodes when you're like, I don't understand how this becomes that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, a, this particular episode is very frustrating. Oh my god! Not just because of that, but also only because of only that. because of one man. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll get there. Lorca's beating the hell out of the Discovery, trying to uh, save the Gregarian and other ships. Yeah, he's from... uh, he doesn't want to leave anyone behind. You know? Basically, yeah. I I'm really, I think that people people are right to dislike Lorca some, but I actually quite like him. I, I really he's growing on me quite a bit as a. This captain is very different than every other captain we've ever had. Oh, definitely. And he has a purpose, and he's single minded in how he's going to achieve it, and it's. While there was some weird stuff with that admiral, and we don't know what's I, going on a little bit yeah, with him sometimes, I, I still, I still kind of think Lorca has some ulterior motives, and uh, we don't know what those are yet. I still, yeah, okay, I still like him in a weird, not sadistic way, but like in a respecting his drive kind of way, right? Yeah. The black alert here is pretty good. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> uh, with the jumping and the trying to... Anyway. They're doing some cool stuff with that spore drive. Something's really, really wrong with Stamets, but we don't care. No one else cares. So whatever, you know? We're it's, just going to move on, I guess. Clearly, he's not happy about having to do these jumps. And something, you know, his brain's getting a little scrambled. But... We'll get there later. Cole of House Core. Finally, I think we find out his house. He's definitely doing a good job uniting the clans with this technology. And we finally yep. get to the meat of the episode. There's a mission to Pavo. They've already dropped off Burnham, Saru, and Ash Tyler to try and get sonar from trees. Yeah, uh, I wrote on here, it's like they're trying to use this tree like a giant universe-wide sonar somehow. That doesn't seem very likely. <laughs> yeah, and we find out here that Saru can run 80 kilometers per hour. When did this happen? <laughs> I, don't, how, I don't see how a physical being with musculature can run 80 kilometers an hour. So his legs are a little bit horse-like or something they have that shape yeah a little bit like uh, almost like hooves or whatever sure so i see the like implication there is that like oh look he has different legs therefore he's fast mm, not sure i buy it <laughs> let's see a cheetah tops out yeah for like at four seconds at a cheetah 60 can or something. yeah a cheetah can run for about four or five seconds for about for 120 kilometers an hour on four legs built to run right a uh, two-legged creature 80 kilometers an hour okay <laughs> whatever space is wild space Andrew. is a wild place man the cg space for this is very was wild so bad i wrote uh 
in right here in all caps cgi saru sucks ass <laughs> big caps i'm glad we put notes. the e on this one because cg saru is so fucking dumb it's really bad man it's really really bad uh, and in fact, Saru is the entire rest of this episode. All Saru my notes is. are just like, yeah. Saru is a dumbass. Holy shit, this is terrible. What? <laughs> Saru is the worst. And then, you know, like, it's just like over and over. Saru as... just goes and sticks his hands in a living crystal or something. Yeah, because... he's like, guys, let's huff these spores. <laughs> because because he seems bad. Because he's, quote unquote, a first contact expert. <laughs> The guy who's literally scared of everything is like, yeah, first contact. That's my zone. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, and and literally he's like, oh, we can't touch the crystals, but let's touch the spore things. Um, oh, my God. Lorel, in the meantime, I Lorel, thought the idea of this living forest was cool, though. I wrote that down. here. Oh, so yeah. Like, you oh, know yeah. what? You're right. It's it's. Oh. It's the cool stuff. It's like almost you wish that this was another one of the normal Trek episodes where you're like, ah, cool, man. That was a cool exploration of a living forest that is a planet, right? Like living planet. Cool. It's like the idea of like the life stream from Final Fantasy VII or something. But like the whole planet is like one symbiosis creature thing or whatever. It was pretty cool. Maybe we'll separate. And they like completely misuse it because the rest of the episode is about like saru being a dumbass and tricking everyone and making everything awful all right we'll do the laurel and the klingon stuff at the end because it doesn't really integrate with the episode it's just separate yeah Um, yeah burnham reminds us that she goes back to prison at the end of the war but she still wants to end the war we get a nice needs of the many versus the needs of the one call forward call it's not a call back (laughs) i I said i am not a big fan of this line reuse in this scene i thought it was kind of a uh to a, half dash or it, yeah it was like it, it was too much of a like hey fans of star trek remember this yeah. like kind of like wink to the camera kind of a use like like you wouldn't say that there you would say something else but they wanted to do a fun aside to you and me okay um but it, it i just yeah it was kind of cool but also so we've spent a night in the planet, Saru's having bad, bad headaches, so he goes and whines to the forest. And then, after him, him whining to the forest, my notes just say, God damn Saru, God damn Saru, so God damn, he is just the worst, the worst. Yeah, yeah it's like, he is, he's a dumbass. <laughs> he turns later, into shit, a little a whiny prick that says they have to stay on the planet because the planet is trying to protect them. You get the feeling that it's not the planet that is in charge. Like I very quickly got the feeling that it wasn't like the planet was like taking over Saru. It was just Saru's little coward instincts that had taken over and he's lying to everyone about everything. Yeah. Um, So in the beginning, I thought it was maybe that like, Oh look, it turns out this planet isn't so nice after all. And they like capture people and eat them or something. That was what I thought for a little bit. And then after like another like scene of it, it was like, Oh, actually no, it's not that. It's just Saru is like, oh, I'm safe here, yay, and then I don't have to like, you know, yeah. ever be around p- other people again or whatever. So I'm being a dick and ruining the entire Federation. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give up the whole Federation so the three of us can stay on this planet like cowards. Um. Uh, he figures out Burnham and Ash have lied to him and runs through the forest like a moron in a terrible CGI that just <laughs> looks so dumb it's like they photoshopped his head onto a blur and i just put this better not lead to a cloak detector oh andrew it doesn't seem like it's going to here for a minute but we'll see later i wrote later that well what if they just let them all die instead and it would be fine yeah I do no like one deserves his, this. I do think that they do a good job. I get pissed off at Saru, but they do a good job of making you understand. He says a line here. I've lived my life not one moment without fear. And yeah. that's a pretty powerful statement to think. What if you just walked around afraid all the time? Yeah. I think that a lot of people do walk around cautious all the time or nervous or things like that, but not afraid all the time and that's it's an interesting 
statement to say yeah. in a place you walk into a place and if you instantly don't feel fear what would it do to you you know sure and i mean a lot of people have like anxiety that they carry with them all the time yeah and seems- you know being free of that is it's probably powerful. a really good feeling. Yeah. So I just, it's just so frustrating when you know where the series wants to go. And then Saru is just like, hold on, let's put all this on hold because I want to live with the trees. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, dude. Yeah. All right. So in this episode, there's some stuff with the Klingons. Laurel is interrogating the yeah. Admiral. Mm-hmm. She's trying to get on to Discovery. So she wants the Admiral to get on Discovery. So they are, quote unquote, escaping, which I thought was a ruse for a minute. I actually th- I actually assumed this was like a really messed up way to torture the Admiral worse by like thinking she's escaping and then actually killing her or doing some worse stuff. Right. It turns out we were wrong because Cole yeah. catches them. Laurel and the Admiral get owned. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go good for them. And uh, I didn't catch that Laurel was the chick from the beginning of the show with Volk. Oh, yeah. I definitely got that. Which I totally missed that. I've had a hard time with faces and names with this show for quite a while. But uh, yeah, they're not good at it. So don't feel bad. Here's why it's an E on this episode. I didn't also catch that Ash was the one that was banging Volk's girl. Oh, yeah. That was the that was the whole thing. Well, they implied that was the thing, and they didn't really show it. Now until... we know for sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Pavo invites the Klingons to try and come make peace, which is the end of the episode. Burnham says, uh, this is a bad plan. We're going to have to defend this entire living planet because the Klingons are going to blow it up. Yep. Uh, which was a cool cliffhanger, and I thought, oh, right, two-parter. And I was like, oh... Then I then I wrote again. It's like, well, you could just let them blow it up. These spirits are kind of dumb. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk away. I'm not sure you're gonna get what you want here. Yeah. All right. Episode nine, because we might as well just jump right into it. Let's do it. The ship of the dead pops out as a as a thing. We finally get a name. Ship of the dead. They called it that before. I uh, I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I missed it again. There's a lot of stuff. I'm, I don't know why I miss so much until it's like the third time that they say something. They so they go so fast sometimes, which they is do. fine. They do. It's fine. They don't, they don't let you like learn anyone's names and stuff. No. I, it is a problem. Uh, the discovery is ordered to retreat, which they quote unquote do at warp because the spore drive is broken. Ha ha. Wink, wink, which actually backfires on them. Yeah. And I wrote here like, hey, let's do science in three hours, stuff that takes the rest of the entire Federation has not done in years or months or whatever. Right. They're going to try and and, they are going. Yeah, they're going to try and crack crack cloaking without Pavo using the Discovery's spore drive. Like you said, let's crack in three hours or, or not even three hours. Let's crack. Yeah. In three hours, what the what the entire Federation doesn't do. Until Spock figures it out years later. In like 20 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's it's insane. Uh, the whole I, the whole premise is bad. And Terrible. Then, you know, because they have only so much time, right, that they can, how long it's going to take them to warp back to whatever starbase so that they can then drop out of warp and spore drive back to Pavo to, to do their whatever. Yeah. And then I just wrote like, their plan seems like a really bad plan. It's terrible. It's, this is the... F- first i think real instance of like god this is just a this is not a good premise for an episode not a good premise for figuring you know like they needed to do this for stuff later because they couldn't figure out a different way to do this yeah it 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 feels ham-fisted and just a lot of like oh we're just gonna shut we're doing this now. Like, it doesn't matter. Ignore character motivations. Ignore, like, reasons. Ignore logic and science. This could have been done differently. I I really... Episode 9 is the first one where I'm just, like, in a huff at the beginning of it. Uh, Which didn't set... Yeah, it didn't set And actually some of the stuff at the end of it, too. Oh, God. Episode 9 is the beginning of... Wow, this show changed, and it's good... But we get there in such a bad way. Yeah. Um, 
And also, you know, like because this moment set me off, and then Admiral Tural comes on, and he first of all, he's a transmission. Oh, we have to do an apology here after, after he's a transmission, but he's also a Vulcan. Yep. Why is he a Vulcan? There are no, as far as we knew, there were no Vulcans in Starfleet. They didn't want to join Starfleet until Spock led the way. But all of a sudden, we just have a Vulcan admiral running things that we've never heard of. Before. It just bothers me. Yeah. I, I just, I was put in such a bad mood here. We have to do an apology, man. We do? Yeah. Um, I was reminded via email. Thank you for emailing podcasts at weweregamers.com. There are holograms in Star Trek. Um, DS9 has a lot of them. Okay. So at, when we were talking about the holograms and stuff, we were like, uh, we don't see this anywhere else, really. Anyway, so it's a uh, okay. let's call but it like, a beta technology for something that comes around in 50 or 100 years or whatever. Okay. I guess that was the... Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I'm glad they use transmissions more and holograms less here in the Latin, in these episodes. They yes. kind of starting around here, they've walked back how much they do holograms. Yeah. Um which is a good thing. There's no more yes. Saru uh, not Saru, Sarek walking around rooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy sitting with on, that. Sitting on a table that doesn't exist. Yep. Yeah. I thank you for rolling it back a little bit here. I appreciate it. We're just going to chalk it up to beta technology for stuff that shows up in DS9. Yeah. All right. It's a bad plan. Um, Very bad plan. It's a bad plan to try and wait out Starfleet. I like that they're like, oh, we need the data trail. But obviously, once they run tests on Stamets, there's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And my first big note of the episode of This Is Just Stupid is... Do bridges not have recorders? Yeah, man. Like, is is there? We have phones that record us all the time. Can we? Can they not record from a captain's chair? Every every plane that flies in the sky has a recorder. Yeah, man. The god black boxes. It's like federally mandated. Does the, I can't believe that the Federation would not mandate there be a black box. <laughs> yeah. So that's my first problem with all of this. Right? Is like. You'd think they would have to go to the captain's quarters to plan this kind of thing or something. Yeah. I don't know. I You wouldn't just want to plan it out in front of it's, everyone. It's something that is a problem in all of Star Trek. It's not like this is specific. Like yeah, true. Kirk yeah. per Kirk breaks the rules all the time on the bridge. Yeah. Uh, but it's something I notice here because they're they're all trying to be all cool about it and they have such a bad plan. Yeah. Uh they're gonna board the ship. Stamets is in a lot of mental trouble, but they're going to use. Okay, they're going to use sensors on board the ship of the dead. Yes, and jump. They're going to put. They're going to. They're going to put two transmitters on the ship. Okay, so that they can tell where it is. When they from jump around it, they're going to three D map it by like doing a lot, a lot of jumps, supposedly. My question is, why can't they do it in space? You need five five points, right? One, two, three, four, no, six points. Six, yeah, six, 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 six points. degrees. Why can't they do it in six jumps instead of 133? Shh. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, Burnaman and Ash get sent on this um away mission into oh. a ship. In you, cl- invisible ship. Before going, they have to convince Stamets to do it. And here's something very important. You can't walk over. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, it seems like Lorca loves collecting things. And he's also been collecting data on the spore drive. And the data on the spore drive he's collected says that there are parallel universes attached to the mycelial network. Woo! Science! Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, he shows he shows Stamets this big map, and he's like, "I've been collecting all this data on the side, and look at this." And he shows him this map, and he's like, "Captain, I didn't know you were interested in like science." Yeah, and, and he's like, 
I want to study all this. It's so cool. And like, you should study it too. But first I have to kill you with all these jumps. Yeah. So let's do that. <laughs> first of all, it might have not been a great idea to show this to statements first. <laughs> it seems like glaring oversight to have shown him something that you know that he's going to do stupid inf- stuff with that information. Yeah. And it's not a surprise, right? I mean, we saw the weird mirror thing with statements. He's talked about weird stuff. So, yeah, whatever. We kind of knew this was coming. Now we well, see so it on a map. I, yeah. So they, they're basically lining up like, you know, some alternate dimension weird stuff is going to go on here. Yep. Um, Burnham bullies the captain into going on the away mission. Right. He clearly does not want her to go again with the whole, like, Lorca uh, can't seem to get Burnham out of his head. Mm -hmm. The Klingon speakers, I think, by the way, uh, because we start to see them on the bridge here, are really hitting their stride in understanding how to pace their language. Yeah. Much better than earlier, which uh, turns out to be kind of sad. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, I also, by the way, we've never talked about this, I don't think, but I really like the little tactical crouch on transport. <laughs> it's so... It's, you don't like it? The whole thing about transporting is you could be wherever you want. Why do you have to, like, start in a tactical crouch if they're <laughs> going to transport you into danger? Transport you somewhere else where you don't need to do that! <laughs> Oh shit! Put him in an empty room. <laughs> if, you, if you think someone's gonna jump out at you, just go somewhere else. That's part of the reason I love the tactical crouch so That's much. So dumb. Ah. <laughs> oh. It's never been anywhere before. Yeah, because, because everyone else had a half a brain and was like, "Oh, we could just go in the other uh-huh. room," and then we ambush them. <laughs> Oh, man. I love it. I love it because it's so silly. It is. It's very stupid. Oh, you kind of think like they could be that could be a good idea. And then you think about why they're doing it. It's like, why would you? Why would you do that? Transport yourself into danger. Spend more than like half a second thinking about it. Oh, I didn't laugh this hard when I saw it. I grin every time they do it because it's so silly. And I yeah. love it in a weird Star Trek way, but oh, I love I love that I oh, I just love everything about this moment. Thank you so much. It's really dumb. Oh man! So I mean, this the boarding party starts, takes their yeah. time. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, Tyler starts having some flashbacks. Uh, the admiral is alive, and she calls Ty- what's happening to Tyler PTSD. Right, and then I wrote, they can't treat PTSD in the future either. Great. Well, not at this point, but... Well, it turns out there's other stuff going on. There's an episode where they go back to the 1960s in in, uh, the original series, and Bones talks about, like, you know, the barbaric ways of treating mental illness back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, they've supposedly... I don't want to say the word cured because mental health people would say you shouldn't say cured, but they've it's not really a cure. They've yeah. found workarounds or treatments or I don't, I don't know the right way to phrase this, but stuff for like schizophrenia and other mental um, disorders. I, I'm not right. I'm not well versed in the way the right way is to speak about um this type of stuff. So I don't want to get too deep into that part of it, but yeah, it seems like, especially next man, well, next like, episode, it, it, there's next the episode. Basically like recognizes it. Instantly, that's fine. It's fine. Right? And it's you like, know, okay, but like the other doctors on the ship never, it's, it's interesting. A, yeah. It's interesting that the Admiral comes up with it right away. There hasn't been a whole bunch of war that we know of. There has been with the Andorians, I guess, but I guess it's right that the Admiral would recognize PTSD because you could you can have PTSD instantly, right? Like go through one oh, traumatic sure. 
instance and then the next day and it was had and there's it. a very clear traumatic instance that we all know tyler has been through right so and everyone should have been like oh this is probably a thing let's say that because of the war he hasn't gotten treatment or something that's fine I um guess, yeah but there's stuff later in the medical bay that you'd be like wait a minute <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah i don't i don't get i don't eh. all right they get through all this uh burnham needs to buy time she's on the bridge for some reason because they needed to put a thing that there. Was, they had to put one in the far back of the ship and yeah. the far front, I okay. guess. And the bridge happens to be in the far front somehow. I don't know. And uh, so she hand to hands coal to buy time. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I put, first I put like, wait, why do they switch back to English here? Oh and, yeah. You know why? And yeah, but that's dumb. It's not and, dumb. Uh, they use the, they, the universal translator. Finally. And then they just, and then they, she throws it away when they like, you know, point guns at her, and then they are back to English now forever. It's in the room. She leaves it. She leaves it to translate on the side of the room. It's open and working. You can see her set it down with her phaser. I was annoyed. Okay. Uh, all right. Fair and enough. then, <laughs> and then I put in all caps. L O L Y. Honor challenges. Plot armor. What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just. Plot armor saves the ship. They yep. transport everybody out, including the admiral. Yep. Who? Who is on a tr emergency transport later? So she's not on the ship later. Well, I she, guess they transport her to Discovery, but she can't walk or something. Yeah, I think she's her back's broken. I think. Right. But they and can't treat that on Discovery somehow, so they have to send her away, which is another gigantic plot hole. Well, also, it would be inconvenient if she stayed on there. Right, because she it's knows completely stuff. inconvenient, so they have to get rid of her, but they can totally treat her on Discovery, but they send her away with an emergency trans transport. Not transport, but, like, it, shuttle. A ship, yeah, yeah, emergency shuttle not, to take her to the Starbase or whatever. This is my problem with the medical bay, is, right? Yeah. Like, there, the medical bay in this show is omni... It's an omni tool for whatever they want to do until they don't want to do something, and that is bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 I don't is screenwriting the right word. I don't know. It's it's bad episode writing here where they're just like, uh, we need to do something. Uh, we can't have him go to the medical bay because that'll complicate things because she knows stuff about Lorca. So, uh, all right, emergency medical shuttle. Here you go. Bye. Like, yeah, and, and in they they're saying how dangerous it is to warp around because the Klingons are are in cloak and grabbing people out of warp. Yeah, we do. it's just no such problem a, there. Such a plot hole. It's crazy. Yeah, like it's they, terrible. They needed to come up with a better way to do this, but they can't because they have to do something else dumb at the end of this. Yes, they do. Um, but before we get there, I wrote in my notes a bunch of letters <laughs> because they've come up with a cloak breaking algorithm after they blow up the ship of the dead with their 133 jumps. You do a million jumps, and each time you jump, you get like 0.1% or whatever. And so bye bye, Cole. Yeah, okay. Bye, Cole. We blew you up, and we got a cloak breaking algorithm that we're going to it's, do yeah. Yeah. with something. I don't get it. it. You Not use good. math, and somehow you can... It's invisibility. Yeah. Stamets quits. He says, I'm not going to jump anymore. My brain's all scrambled. I need to go to a doctor. And Lorca accepts that. He's like, that's fine. All right, we'll warp back. You've done, you done enough. Right? That yeah, was the first time I was immediately suspicious because Lorca was agreeing to something. No. You, that he didn't do, come up with. What, why are you suspicious? I just, you, man. He is, he is, he is a, scheming. I don't know not, what it I is. Don't, I don't, I don't see it that way. I look at it as like she he looks at a man that gave everything for the crew. She did. And, and says, okay, man, we we can fight our way back if we get in trouble. Which, again, why did they send a shuttle on its own alone back to... A lot of questions. A lot of questions. Why Why would you do that? They're going to warp back anyway. What? What? So stupid. So stupid. If you're worried about the Admiral, you can create tension by keeping her sedated all the time because you said that her 
injury is so bad. She needs sure. to be sedated. You fine. Just keep her out. Fine. Whatever. Leave yeah. her on the ship. I guess and they then, can, like, you know, obviously, but... spend spend ten seconds at the starbase. Say like, oh, we have to offload the admiral first. And Lorca's like, peace, you know. And then, like, you know, I don't, I don't you know. breaking something, rules again. Something that's had his character. Oh man, something had to change here. Something really yeah. had to change here. Laurel knows something about Ash, and then all of a sudden, Stamets is like, uh, you know, you know what? I changed my mind. I want to protect the crew from warp. But again, we left the Admiral in a shuttle somewhere. Yeah. So we'll jump one more time. And Lorca buys into that. I This is the part that I don't get, right? Like, Lorca's totally on board with, like, let's let's warp. You're not doing the thing again. You gave up too much. Uh, this was... this. So I think that this was Lorca's way of, like, convincing him to do it. That's what I thought. Really? Yeah, he was like, he was playing the, oh, sure, buddy, we'll do what you want. Yeah, let's try it your way. You oh, think- man, this is really tough. Like, I don't know if we're going to make it this way, but it's good that you're not like, you know, we need to keep you healthy. So you, okay, we got to get to the next episode and then I want to, we'll finish the next episode. Mm. Yeah, we'll finish the next episode and then we'll talk about what you think Lorca's doing then. Because that, you yeah. got to get through that. Um, I didn't know at this point, so. Stamets is in trouble. So, okay. I think something different than what you think. So, do you... Th- so, Lorca punches something in. Does he? As they're about to jump. Yes! Oh. So, I read that as him intentionally causing the misjump. I thought that Stamets, because he knows about the alternate dimensions, misjumps on purpose. Uh, I... Because he tells he tells Culber, oh, we're going to go to this place and I love you and all this other stuff. And then, like, I feel like that's the guilt of, like, I want to go see this alternate universe stuff. Mm-hmm. Am I reading that wrong? I just read it as, like, Culber was the- very worried. Culber was very worried about him, right? Because he's like, one more jump is going to kill you, right? They kept saying that, like, his health is very fragile because of all these jumps were like really deteriorating statements. And he, the, that series of a hundred jumps or whatever he barely lived through. Yeah. And so they didn't, he didn't, he was just concerned for statements safety. And he's like, I love you. Don't worry. I'll just do this one. And then we're done forever. And okay. it'll be great. I'll go with so you to the opera. You are saying uh, that I, I missed something and Lorca changed the coordinates or did that's something. That's what I saw. Yeah. While, and I missed that, I guess. Lorca types like he does one of those like on his look chair to see that no one is looking at me on the chair and he goes boop 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 and you don't see what he's doing but he like you know does some stuff huh okay well I maybe That's I have to I change thought. my opinion then I thought well maybe yeah okay all right so they jump yeah and we get two discoveries for a second and yep. then they're in a field of wreckage mm-hmm where are we? Where could we possibly be? We don't know. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. Episode 10. Yep. So what turned into a two-parter has now become another uh, arc. So we don't yeah. get any more Star Trek start. Well, we do get some Star Trek. Yeah, there's some real Star Trek stuff going on here. There's sure. <laughs> some real Star Trek now. Um, what's... Uh, oh, yeah. We get some threat ganglia when Ty- Tyler walks on the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Vulcans show up and shoot the Discovery. What? Vulcan separatists, though, they thought, right? They thought. Like, oh, okay. Sure, okay. yeah. But then there's Vulcans and Andorians on a Klingon ship. And everyone is like, huh? And Tyler is losing his shit. Yeah, Tyler is having a, a real bad time uh, throughout all of these episodes. It's starting even in nine. Yeah, but then he goes to see Lorel in prison, and they start saying Klingon prayers together. He's losing time. He doesn't know what's going on. He's obviously been brainwashed or something else, which yeah. is clearly something else, right? Well, yeah, yeah. It's a, I thought it was still brainwashing at this point, but like by the end of this, yeah, it's something else. Um, I yeah, I was wondering if it was like a consciousness thing, like they had, they had, but ugh, then the medical so day I, says no. So I wrote that I, I wrote that Lorel has been doing some liquid snake slash the Patriots stuff from Metal Gear Solid and is like <laughs> is like turning him into a sleeper agent who has like, you know, some kind of like 
embedded you know she's she's giving him the activate command to yeah. turn on the sleeper Manch- cell or whatever so well, he can so you know do a bunch is, of stuff for her this is called the manchurian candidate right right uh and they say in this episode this mm-hmm. episode i think that the 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 computer has a manchurian test maturia test or whatever right like literally they're saying the computer can detect brainwashing in your brain and i was like what yeah the computer can again, detect again, brainwashing the, but not his ptsd the again computer, more instances of the medical bay oh, being God. used in the, dumb ways the medical bay swiss army knife of like well, we brought you on the ship and we checked your body out and it said everything's fine, but I just looked at it again and the computer says you've got scar tissue all over your body. What? Yeah. Yeah. Come Why? On, man. You did a crap job examining the first time. Yeah, I basically, guess, Dr. Like, Culver on, is either incompetent or is really bad writing. Well, it turns out that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Culver gets aced. He gets murdered in this episode. And I, wrote, I liked one. him. I'm sad. I did. I liked him as a person. I'm not certain that I liked his the use of his character. Like I liked the actor, the actor did a great job. Um I think that they could have used him for more before. Yeah. Uh well, yeah, spoilers. At the end of this Tyler goes to the doctor and says, "I don't feel like myself." The doctor says, "You're not yourself, you're some kind of other thing." And then uh he just loses his shit and kills him. Yeah. And meanwhile, through this whole episode, like Stamets is like, you know, semi catatonic yeah, and like messed coming up in and out jump. way messed but, up, but like it, coming in and out in like prophetic ways and saying things. They called called Sylvia the captain, yeah. said the enemy is among us. And, you know, as Tyler walks in the room, says the enemy is among us and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he's, it, he's talking about a he's talking about a forest and a castle and a bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. Palace or anyway, uh, we find out through the Klingon slash Vulcan memory cube that right. we are we are in the Terran Empire alternate universe. And I wrote in big cap, "Oh, here we go, mirror universe time." <laughs> it's the what do we call it? The beard universe. I where, the where, I think they literally call it in DS Nine the mirror. Yeah, it's the one where everyone is evil versions of themselves. So, like, Riker has yeah. been there, and he has a beard. Uh, yep. Archer has been there, and he has a beard. And Everyone's got uh, a beard in this universe. But, and, like, Kira Norris is a, uh, like, evil Everyone's space evil. station emp- empress. Yeah. And Cisco is her plaything. And, yeah, th- that whole... They they did several episodes where they ended up somehow in the mirror universe. I think in almost DS9. every show since they introduced it in in uh, TNG has done a mirror, been to the mirror. Yeah, it, I think TNG only went there maybe once or twice. Yeah, I don't think that they explored it very much. The other shows explored. DS Nine went there quite a bit. I feel they had a huge arc where they got stuck there and had to get back. Right, that's what I'm thinking of. There was a few episodes there. Yeah. Well, so similar to this, where they're like, uh, we got to get out of here. And then things bleed across, right? Uh, yeah, so they figure yeah. out that the Mirror Universe USS, ISS Discovery is probably in the Prime Universe. Yeah. And so then, you know, now that they have read this cube and, and Lorca's like, well, the only thing we can do is we got to blend in. So let's make a bunch of changes to our ship that can literally change the entire setting of the bridge, the outer hull, everything about the ship. You got all this time to make these changes. And uh, maybe you could work on getting home instead of this. I think that they had already said that they knew they needed to get the info on the Defiant before they could get back. So they had to blend in because it was going to take a while to get the info on the Defiant because the best plan they can come up with is that Burnham is also a captain in this universe that is right. m- missing in action, and they're right. going to have to send her to her old ship with Lorca as his her prisoner. Because the, Lorca was a wanted criminal. ISS Shenzhou. Yeah. I was, like, very happy that they were going to use the Shenzhou model again. Yeah, it was cool. I, uh... 
at this time, I didn't see where they were going with it, but it was cool to see like, oh, they got all these, um, the, 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 the fun other alternate universe captains of the various people that we like. And right. is this, is this where we meet, uh, Captain Tilly? Yes. Captain Sylvia Tilly. A Killy. Captain <laughs> Killy. <laughs> It, it she's just like what <laughs> i'm not i don't I dislike just, her at all uh, um next episode i do kind of dislike her mm -hmm. character i just don't know if she's i didn't believe any minute of the sylvia killy thing i would have i don't know i think the it can't be Saru, obviously right and it's they, hard they were for trying to have fun they're trying to have fun but it's hard for them to actually use anyone else on the ship because they don't ever focus on anyone else on the ship yeah they well at the it's like oh they could have made the doctor or stamets or something that would have been fun but, but they can't St stamets is incoherent and not awake the Doctor is friggin' dead by the end of this episode. Yeah. I mean, the, what they should maybe have done a little bit is spent a little bit of time on some of the bridge crew, especially I'm intrigued to know about their their navigator. Like, she could have done it. You know, somebody yeah, it else. it turns out she's Burnham's first officer in the on the other ship, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? So. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I don't know. It, like, I don't have anything wrong with Tilly. Like, she's an okay character. She's just sort of the, like, bad, naive ensign who also is, like, maybe kind of on the autistic spectrum or something. Definitely some sort of Asperger's thing. Yeah, and, like, it's... Her character is just a lot sometimes. I don't know what it is. It definitely is in episode 11. It's too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so, again, I got the impression here in episode 10 that it was, like, Okay, cool. So, like, maybe one more part of this while they do some sort of fun Star Trek stuff. Yeah, it's like, okay, we're we're coming up with a fun plan. We're going to make, like, a, a two-part episode here. Do some cool stuff. Okay, they're going to go find this other ship. And they've come up with this plan to dress up Michael and Lorca and take the... And, and Tilly and, and impersonate these people and, and trick everyone to go get this info. It's like a, It's like a cool, like, undercover heist movie. Man, we are so wrong. So wrong, apparently. It was clear they used the Shenzhou and Burnham as the captain to really start exploring some stuff about what it means to put aside your principles. And it's yeah. going to be more than one episode of that. Yes. Episode 11, we open up with some I, more. I even wrote at the end of 10, I'm like, you're the captain. You can order anyone around. You can't just take some time to use a computer to get this info. Oh, dude, I have that in the middle of the next episode. Yeah, I have it all over everywhere. Like every five minutes, I'm like, it's just some info. Just got to use a computer. Can't use a computer anywhere. Like it's like five yeah. times. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's OK. We'll get there in a Sorry. minute. Sorry. Yeah. OK. So, episode 11. Klingon stuff opens up episode 11. And I literally have in my ep my notes at the very beginning. First three words. Tyler is Voke. Oh, so you guessed it before they made it very explicit? Yes. First, I did not. First thing under episode 11, Tyler is Voke. Well, uh, spoiler alert later in the episode, Tyler is Voke. <laughs> um, and I here we'll jump to the end here where they do this. And I, my notes, it says, man, WTF is this as I'm watching it. And I'm like, Tyler is Voke. I wrote big caps, LOL. Yeah. We'll and get, we'll get to that when it actually yeah. happens in the show. I don't know if it's a plot point or if it was just for cool scenery, but Discovery's having electrical problems and the Discovery figures out that Culber is dead and that Stamets didn't do it and they figure out that Tyler is a bad guy, right? Like, right away. Yeah. Um, it's like, wow, none of you could have figured this out until now, huh? Yeah. We go back to the ISS Shenzhou where Burnham has been in charge. She's watching people get murdered. Uh, she's just kind of has to hold it up. Lorca's being tortured constantly by what do they call them? Agonizer chambers. Yeah, agonizing chambers or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, something like that. It's Which, just like you're just in there and you're just constantly being low level electrocuted all the time. Seems like it. Yeah, something like that. But so, they've been there two days, and my thing is like, what are you doing? Hurry up! 
Yeah. Yeah, I said, this plan is bad. <laughs> yeah. They don't seem to have a way to get to the info. She never has a minute to herself, but she has plenty of time to have a sex scene with Tyler. Yeah. It's like, come on. Y'all people have a mission. Yeah. Right here. Let's go. Yeah. They have a little mission. transmission with Saru. With the captain having so much power on this ship, right? Like, they talk yeah. about how everyone's afraid of her. There's a little she can mini- make miniature bully people into doing whatever ship, right? she wants. Yeah. If you can bully all these people into doing do whatever it. you want, just bully and be like, I want this info. Yeah. And it's like, I'm going to have it. It's like, why? Yeah. Fuck you. Why? Because I'm the captain. Do it or I'm going to kill you. Right. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Tilly, Tilly finds her stride. She tells people about like cutting out their tongues and licking her boots with them. It was a lot. That was a lot. Um, but this Burnham seems to a- be a little bit more on the reserve side. Uh, Burnham is tasked with killing the Firewolf, who is yeah, the leader the of the Resistance. Wolf. I thought that was a cool name. It's like, oh, the Firewolf. I write down. I wrote down. So we get to go to alternate Beard World, <laughs> <laughs> where uh, Sarek shows up with his wonderful alternate beard. I wrote that Sarek is on some stuff here. Yeah, he is. Like, he is definitely next level sage. Sage something. E- evil mind meld Sarek with a beard is like oh I, we're gonna talk about it here so like they they go to this planet or whatever where the guy is known to be the plan is to trick them somehow and then Burnham decides that her and Ash are actually gonna save this guy instead of and all these people instead of instead of blowing them up right, well Lorca she tries to to Lorca tells her to kill them all Right, Lorca's just like, whatever, just blow him up, let's get out of here. Yeah, and she says, we can't do that, You, your torture is affecting you, we have to try and help them. And he's like, maybe you're right, I don't know, just only take Ash with you, don't get caught, do what you have to do, let's get the hell out of here, please. Yeah, I mean, pretty reasonable request from Lorca here, <laughs> yes. Being, having been tortured for hours every day. For days, yes, yeah. Yeah. I like that he doesn't have the prison jumpsuit everyone else has. He's still in his trench coat. Yeah. I guess uh, she yelled at him enough to not change his clothes. I guess. Yeah. He probably stinks at this point, right? Probably not great. I mean, I feel like being tortured for hours on end every day is probably going to leave you in not a great place. I would like to see somebody go to the bathroom, just into a bathroom. Hmm. In all of Star Trek? Yeah. One bathroom? I mean, that happens in TNG a lot. They have them, yeah, but you don't see people using them. That's fine. I just want to see a bathroom. Okay. Uh, Voke is the firewolf. Yeah, Burnham, and yeah. Burnham tries to understand him, and what else happens here? Tyler freaks out. Tyler, again, loses his shit. Burnham has been covering for him in a lot of these cases, right? Where like but, he's lost his ship, and she was with him, and she's like, it's going to be okay, man. We'll get together. You know, I'll help you, whatever. Yeah. On the ship, she was helping him you know deal with his trauma or whatever and then this time he's just like i can't have this i gotta do some murders now well, Volk, Volk says oh it's you know it's within the klingon code to find allies because Kalis says you know we have to just survive basically right and, and Volk tyler can't have that remain no. klingon i've got to kill you yep uh, uh, even after like, so I I really wish we got more of the interiority of what happens between evil Sarek with a beard and Burnham there. Yes, because I would like they, that. He has here. He has the it, Firewolf doesn't trust him, right? Because she's some evil Empress lady, or not Empress? She's the evil Captain Lady in that universe. So he has Sarek, you know, go mind melder, and Sarek's like, oh, we can trust Burnham. Yeah, you know, it's the first instance. Man, don't you want to say some stuff? There's some things you might have uncovered here that maybe should, you know, lead you to believe some things that are, you know, different than what is going on. Yeah. You're just like, nah, we're good. Like, what what are you doing, dude? Yeah, I don't. This is the first instance of like the Vulcanism that's in the show. They started out with way too much, like the the space telepathy from across the, the universe. And then now it's like. At the the crowning moment of Sarek mind melding and and the whole future of the show at hand, and they're like mind meld. All right, we're good. It's like wait, what? Slow down a second. <laughs> and all he says is like we can trust her, and you're just like, 
there are some things that might be germane to your operations here <laughs> that you may want to the... tell all these other people. What's the name of the thing in um uh Rogue One? Uh the the what do they call it? The Bodhi something. Oh man, now it's I'm confused. The, what the, we're Rogue about. One, the little machine thing that like th- the Bodhi gets like mind blasted by to make sure that you're a good guy what's his name has um gosh man my brain is not so i love that rogue one movie too and i should remember this off the top of my head but there's like a little interrogator alien that the the rebels have to make sure everybody's a good guy oh okay yeah and that's like the level it's like a little faceless blob alien i can't remember the name of it but uh, but the resistance has it, and to make sure that they're good guys, they like interrogate people with it. And that yeah. reminds me of this, where it's like Sarek has become a faceless blob alien that just tells you if you're a good guy or bad guy. It's like, okay, great. Yeah, uh, do, uh, uh, mm. waste of mm. time. Why was he even there? Yeah, so they come to an understanding about what it is to be Klingon in in the alternate universe. So hopefully. Burnham can use it in the Prime universe. And we switch back to Discovery. Completely well, unclear to me how that actually helps. I don't I don't get it either. It was kind of disjointed. I I we need to see the payoff to see what she gleaned from that because I didn't glean anything from like Right. Voke says it's okay to uh she says she does say, Oh, you have a common enemy, basically. So like she needs to find the Klingons a common enemy to for them to be with humans, I guess. Which happens in the Jem Hadar and DS9, but not really. But they've before allied that. before that, right? Oh, I mean, I guess, but not in the original series, right? They're still no, they're yeah, they're still at war in the original series for sure. So, or they're in a Cold War by then. My yeah, guess yeah, is the they're going to find the Romulans soon. Mm. Anyway, yeah. I and so uh, and so then they they we, escape or whatever. Yeah, we gotta. Do we finish? No, we gotta stop and deal with the Stamets thing in the middle of this, right? Yes, yes, we do. I don't get it. I don't get why they went with blah 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 techno jumble. The brain, I, I'm Sylvia Tilly Cadet, and I understand that the brain is a, I'm more qualified than the doctor because the brain is part of the mycelial network, and I'm the last the, expert He needs on to it. get high. You gotta you give got him his drugs, get Andrew. Him, get him back in the shroom chamber. <laughs> give him the, he needs the crack to stay alive. I, yeah, I don't know. I mm, I'm gonna pump him seems... full of, and like Saru's like all about like okay, I totally trust that you're totally in charge of this. You should heal Stamets, and then they get him in the chamber, and his heart does some palpitations, and Saru completely loses confidence and probably kills him. Yeah. Ugh. Why did this happen? Because we can't have good things apparently, and they just want to kill off all the fun characters. I don't know. I did. Why did we need this? We didn't. I didn't. I did, none I, of this was needed, I don't think. They had to have someone who has interacted with Stamets before do something because they already killed his boyfriend, the doctor. But, so they can't have him do it. Okay, so and the end so of the episode... Tilly is the only one. The end of the episode with Stamets, right? He's walking through the spore forest. Right, yeah. And f- f- runs into ISS Stamets, who we then are supposed to assume has the same problem. Or they have been like, so the thing I didn't get here was uh, uh, ISS statements was like, oh, like I see you again or something. No, he's like, welcome. You finally made it or something like that. I've, oh, right. I'm waiting okay, for like, you yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see you finally made it. So they could have jump started his brain with some sort of electrical pulse. And then that could have been the end of this. Yeah. The whole like Tilly, like there are other doctors on board, right? They could have yeah. just been like, all right, doctor, we need stamets. And I just don't. Ugh. Yeah. 
there is some some great stuff here, and then there is some jumbled mess. And this Stamets getting him to the forest with the other guy, it seems like they were like, we have to jumpstart him so that he can get there. It's like, I don't think they needed any of that. Yeah. I don't think they needed yeah. any of it. Yeah. I, I mean, he was acting so weird at this point, you could have just had him die on the medical table and then end up in the forest. Sure. And yeah, like, oh, you no, have to he's make crashing. an action scene out of it, right? Yeah, like, he, you could just... He's been freaking out the whole time. You could have just said, like, this is the culmination of his thing. He dies on the medical team and ends up in the forest. Right. It would have been the same. There was no, like, there was no expository dialogue or anything in that action scene that we needed. You could have just not had the whole scene. Yeah. All right. Um, is this where we get the Tyler is Vogue yeah, stuff? Yeah, so, so that's kind of the, the only other stuff left. Well, other well, than the big There's turn. one other thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we got to finish the Burnham and Tyler storyline here. Uh, Tyler realizes that he is Vogue, that his body was somehow... I just... How do you reduce the new Klingons, right? The old Klingons, maybe, because they did the whole thing... They've done it multiple times where they're like, we're going to add you some forehead ridges, buddy, guy. Yeah, and, and on the and outside, you'll look in. like a Klingon. Right. But on the inside, you're still a human, so don't get scanned, right? And yeah. so reversing that, if you have not messed with the Klingon anatomy like they did so badly. Even if you had, they could just do the same thing. They've got makeup. They got prosthetics. I believe in them. It would work. <laughs> But instead, they've, re- quote unquote, reduced his body to a human. So they, like, cut him up. Why? Somehow changed his internal organs. Why? I don't. Because so, like, he says they needed is, a spy? This is what Lorel was doing all that time, supposedly. Lorel's right? idea, her grand plan, was that he was going to be on the Discovery as a spy? To do what? To do what? For what reason? Why any of this? I don't... I... I, I first off, like, the the turn... I, I So, again, I, I didn't see the Tyler's Vogue stuff coming. Oh, okay. And I, I just thought it was, like, all really bad PTSD, and for some reason, Vern or, was willing to put up with his bullshit. I thought, I thought that I was uh, wrong for a minute, right? and maybe it yeah. was, like, brainwashing and torture. Yeah. Like, it was like she had implanted some, like, you know sleeper agent stuff in him and was going to use him to blow the ship up with her on it as her revenge or what yeah that's kind of where i thought this was going and but i kept getting confused it would like kick in in all these weird times that didn't make sense like how would she know he would end up in this situation to like execute the sleeper commands or whatever but no instead he's just straight up some other guy and i mm, mm, not a fan Unless like they do something good with it. I, 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 here's what they're going to do with it. She beams him into space uh, and yep. uses a punch to hide some stuff on his body because she can't decode. She needs Discovery to decode the d- Defiant information. The right. d- Discovery beams him out. Saru already knows he's a bad guy. So they say, you know what? We're still Federation. You're going to jail. And he says, you should have let me die with honor. They're going to put Lorel and him in jail, and they're going to use the two of them to create some sort of understanding with the Klingon Empire, right? I, yeah, I guess. That's what they're there for, but, like, what a mess. It sucks. It kind of sucks. It sucks a lot. I don't, I'm not a fan of this whole arc of this so far. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll enjoy it better when it comes around, but I don't, I don't like this. You know what doesn't suck? You know what doesn't suck? Let's get to the thing at the end. There's two this, There's two pieces to the end of this that don't suck. That are great. Burnham's on the bridge and the planet catches fire because the, like, emperor, what? the emperor's cloaked ship shows up and the He's emperor like, hey. is Philippa Giorgio. That's what I wrote here. I wrote, LOL, Emperor Giorgio is here. I didn't write <laughs> LOL. I wrote, hell yeah. Oh, it was good. Uh, I'm I this was just like I was in a very weird state after watching all the Tyler's Vogue stuff I was just like this is dumb I'm really what is this and then when the Emperor showed up I was like oh okay it's gonna get real and then it's like <laughs> what's the actress's name um I wanted to say the wrong name I was gonna say um 
Ming Na, but that's uh, is it Sandra O? Oh? Sandra? No, no, that's not Sandra O. Oh. Okay, someone else. I don't know. Sandra O anyway. oh is from uh, she's from Sideways. Ye, uh, what is she? Yeah, she's really? in that movie. Yeah, she's from that other show that um, Grey's Anatomy. Grey as Grey's Anatomy. No, um, 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 um Michelle Yeoh. Michelle Yeoh, thank you. The yes, wonderful Michelle Yeoh. I think she's yeah. a great actress. The Chinese, she is, she, Malaysian. She is great. Yeah, she is great. And I was just like, okay, man. Yeah, sure. She's the emperor. Why not? <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I was, I was like, I was laughing at this. Just like how fun and dumb they have made this alternate universe just like she's great they always they always had referred to there was a terran emperor we kind of knew yeah in this like a mirror universe they had referenced it before like it oh, seems like, like it would change a lot who the emperor is too based on all the murder yeah because there's a lot of murder <laughs> um you know I mean, in these few episodes here we've spent here there have been a few murders there's uh, i wonder murders. <laughs> i wonder how the human race uh handles the uh the attrition rate because there's a lot of murders, uh, and it seems like there's no time for anyone to have children because they would be too busy murdering or being murdered. <laughs> so, uh, really, a lot of questions about you know the human primacy arguments and stuff mirror going universe on, so. space murder might be <laughs> advantageous to the replacement rate. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I guess, or yeah, it it, it would, seems like it would cause some problems, you know. But instead, anyway. they've taken over the universe despite stabbing each other in the back constantly. Constantly. You'd think, constantly. though, that, like, there she are She just, some... like, airlocks her... Uh, she doesn't airlock it, but she murders her, like, first lieutenant or whatever who had been running the ship in her absence. Well, he tried to kill her. At, at, yeah, well, look, yeah. But and, normally, he, she would have just killed him. And... ISS version of her would have just killed him. And then the, his dead body falls on the bridge, and the bridge crew claps. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good because he's he's in the middle of complaining about it he's like good, good no job one, murderer no one yes. bowed low enough to me so i'm gonna kill you and then they will and she's like no cling on yeah. or uh vulcan friggin and i have vulcan fighting skills and you you're gonna die and then her crew's just like yeah we didn't like that guy thank you yes <laughs> well done well done let's murder oh. yeah so, I anyway. love the mirror universe so much. It's very silly. A very silly. I really, really enjoy, despite all the complaining we did during these two episode block here from 10 and 11. It's just, I actually really liked this. It's stuff. just, it's hapdash, right? Like, yeah, it, it's a lot of it is a mess. I don't care how we got through. I, I, I care how we got through it, but like we're in a good place and I enjoy it. And a lot of Star Trek is a mess. Not, it's not just discovery. Oh, no, yeah. Like, we could go back and talk about other Star Trek seasons I mean, and we, other shows. We both we love DS9, will, and some of DS9 is just, like, a disaster. There are many long episode arcs in DS9 that are, why are they even here? Yeah. And I caught something here that I don't know if you caught, but they show Lorca as the last shot. And Lorca smiles. Oh, I don't think I saw that. Lorca has a... Uh, he turns away from the screen and he smirks to himself. Because the the Emperor uh, Emperor uh, Giorgio is like, no one keeps me waiting. How dare you? I finished this stupid job for you. Um, now you see you've brought me the traitor Lorca or whatever. Yep. And her outfit is so good. And uh, her outfit is so like amazing it's so mirror universe they nailed it, it it's so it's good it's just like the like a giant cape with spikes and all this stuff you're just oh my she's god she's got gold armor on yeah yeah it's gonna be lot. amazing uh so obviously we're in for the long haul uh we did not think we were but the mirror universe is gonna be where this story ends maybe maybe yeah there's only I... four more episodes here right 12 13 14 15 yeah, before the end of season one. I don't see how they wrap this up in one more. So we've got at least, I'm guessing. You know, they've done it before, though. So let's true. not. I've, I really hope they don't because there's a yeah. lot of stuff to unravel here, especially if what you and I are piecing together is true, that Lorca wanted them here because you seem yes. to imply that they. And so that was that was my thing. I think this whole time Lorca has been trying to get them into the mirror universe somehow because i my 
my secret prediction is that he is from the mirror universe and has been stranded there for a while. Or, or I have to win the war by any means possible. I'm going to go get some ISS ships and bring them back. That would also be uh, seemingly within his character. It's possible. I don't, I don't know, but I think the... This is what I think the twist will be, is that Lorca was from the Mirror Universe. Well, see, I don't get why, if he's from the Mirror Universe, why is he worried about getting the Discovery back to the main universe? Because he's, they went to find the info. He's, he's very concerned always about his crew. And in, in the beginning of this arc, he asks, you know, like, they try and find out who everybody is, you Mm -hmm. know, so they don't mess up when somebody attacks them, when they do the whole Captain... Tilly thing and all that right, and he's right. like okay so what about me and she goes well you're probably dead and I'm the one that killed and, you or whatever or you killed me some, or we fought each like, other on the Boran and he's like oh what happened to my crew on the Boran and she says they're all dead and he's like oh man I wish there was a better version of me in this reality yeah is so you get the you get the I, impression so, that he still cares about getting back to the other reality and why would he say that if he was from the mirror universe, right? Like, I wish there was a better version of me here. Well, the, it, uh, in the mirror universe, right, he's like a wanted criminal. He's a, yeah, he's for, a rebel. For stealing, you know, stuff away or whatever. So in some ways, the other universe is like his utopia, right? It would be the way he wishes things could be. True. That's a good point. So, you know, I, I don't see it as bad that he wanted to get back. I'm just unclear about why he wanted to get there in the first place. Well, why place. does he want to get if he does want to get there, why does he want to get there and also why does he want to go back to prime? Yeah. I don't I I could see your theory panning out for sure. Um because it could make sense given the whole like you saw him punch the thing in and I saw the smirk. Yeah. Um but I kind of felt like maybe it's more one of those I need a weapon for winning the war and I've been planning to get one from this alternate universe that I heard about from the defiant like because he yeah. already knew about the defiant right right um so m- there's something yeah. up with you're right there's something there's up something with Lorca up. so and, and you know maybe it's a case where like you know he and his he switched places with that uh, other Lorca at some point you know and that's why like even in the how. far past, potentially, sure, like I guess the other Lorca that was in the maybe that's why Mirror the, Universe was the real Lorca, and he's been Mirror. And that's universe why he's a rebel is because Mirror Universe Lorca right. he switched, and then the yeah. Starfleet Lorca turned them into rebels. Yeah, maybe. I guess it's possible. I don't know. That's a lost. That's some. That's some heavy lifting. We're gonna need all four episodes to do that heavy lifting. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm. You know. That's just a. That's just a guess based right. on literally no information at all. So we've been going an hour and a half. So I guess we should just do our impressions of these four. I think we've done what we th- we five think that there's going to be more universe. Yeah, we did five this time. There's we think episodes four is getting out. These last four is getting out of the mirror universe, right? Probably, probably. Like so it, you know, what did you think of these five overall? They spent a lot of time on these costumes. They got to use them. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, I. Re- seven was a really nice one off and then kind of eight through 11 here kind of started this this arc of the like the klingons and the the cloak and then ending up in the mirror universe and i really did enjoy all of this eventually i you know we complained about like you know the the things we didn't like throughout this and just sort of talked about it but they were enjoyable to watch in the moment yeah um whether or not i agree with the direction the writing is going or what is kind of irrelevant, but I had a good time watching these. And like you said, you know, as we watched them, it was like, well, okay, we can't stop at nine. We should watch 10. Oh, well, we should probably watch 11. And, you know, 11 has the big kind of reveal at the end there. So that felt like an okay place to call it. Man. Yeah. I'm definitely in for watching the rest. I, given the messiness on getting here, I'm a little worried about the messiness and wrapping it up because. Yeah. Would. I mean, obviously, they can't stay there and still have the USS Discovery, so they've got to figure something out. You know, they, maybe the writing is completely different than what we think. Maybe the, I just you know, yeah, I it could know. go a lot of ways, and that's the exciting part. 
you know, with without us having spoilers, we've managed to avoid them. Thanks to it being a digital show, you can kind of not run into anything if you don't want mm-hmm. to. Yeah. So I I'm excited in a reserved kind of I love Star Trek way to see what we're gonna get. And uh I think is it safe to say I think the last episode of season so episode twelve of uh subspace transmissions will just be the last four of these? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So um you know, if you want to laugh at us, don't give us spoilers in the podcast at WeWereGamers dot com. Yeah, send send us some emails about your opinions about these episodes. Though, yeah, there's give stuff us, in here. Give us some stuff from here. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. We were gamers. Get ready to do the last couple with us, and after we do the last couple, then send us all the like season one. What you thought? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, don't send us anything about season two though, because we'll get there. Please don't. I'm sure we're gonna do that too. We're gonna take a little break after episode 12 and do one or two episodes on the existentialism of transporters yeah and then we'll be back at it for season two because we got to finish that before picard hits <laughs> yeah man and then eventually there's going to be a season three of discovery too true. i think i said i think i saw them saying they were they started filming so yep all right well <laughs> i love the iss stuff man i love it it's I think the costume designers had so much fun. <laughs> you can see they really just like, oh, we get to we get to just go for it now, and yep. they sure did. Yep. Until next time, uh, what does he say? Beam he out, says, Andrew. He says, "Go." He, Lorca says, "Go." Lorca says, "Go." All right, friends, go. to get my notes up here yeah man which means i think i need to email them to myself because they're quite long Mm. it's a lot of episodes i have them on paper yeah maybe that's the way i should do it i don't know if it's good or not i can't tell (laughs) There's benefits to both. Totally. Like, I can't, if I remember something in the middle of the day later, I can't add it to my notes because they're at home and I'm not or there. Or you have to do the thing where you got to put it in your phone and you got to remember it's in your phone. Yep. Yep. I just wish there was an easier way to get something from my... We're pretty far along. Phone. We can't f- phones read our mind yet. That's what I want to yeah. know. That's pretty close, man. Come on. I just okay, want to like f- figure the shit out that I want. Yeah, I want to be able to like swipe. Here's a matching video. <laughs> What'd she say? I didn't. I yeah. missed it. Google's like a here. Use here's a YouTube video named "Figure the Shit Out That I Want." <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's already on. It's like ready to go next time you open YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I just... Where's that future that was promised where you like swipe your phone and then shit's in front of whatever other screen in front of you, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, I've got them emailed now I gotta put them in this is just so stupid so much work it's not great (sighs)